Hi, this is part two of research issues related to VCE Unit 3 Psychology presented by Andrew Chua. Now we want to talk about experimental design. This, that is about the three main ways of organizing your participants in an experiment. All right, there are three possible designs, the independent groups, the repeated measures, or the match participants. Now the first one is the independent group. An independent, independent group, you have your whole pool of participants, you know, someone A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And what you do is you separate them into two groups. One where they experience the control or the treatment, sorry, the condition or the treatment, or two, the control group, where they get no treatment. Now, this is the simplest design to set up, and it's sometimes known as the between participants design. So that's a good advantage. It's simple to set up, it's very easy. The disadvantage is it allows effects of personal characteristics of participants that it can affect the DV to occur. So we talked about energy drinks beforehand. If all the people that were in condition group or the experimental group happen to be all be professional athletes, then we don't know whether or not it's the characteristics, it's the personal characteristics or the treatment or the condition that actually produces the results. So in order to counter that, we have the next uh, way of dealing, the next experimental design, which is the repeated measures, where all participants go through the control um, the control uh, experience, and then they go through the condition or the treatment experience, or the experimental group. All right. Now, this helps, obviously, control or eliminate any effects of personal characteristics that can affect the DV, because it doesn't matter if we've got professional athletes or amateurs in the total group, both of them will experience the experimental condition and so therefore we will see how it affects every single one of them before, you know, without the treatment and with the treatment. This is why it's sometimes known as the within participants design. Now the downside of this is that uh, you have what are called auto effects. So we don't know whether or not participants perform better the second time because they've been more practice at the testing procedure or that they might perform worse because of fatigue or tiredness or just being bored with uh, having to do the experiment again or the conditions again. Now this can be addressed with counterbalancing where you split the total group of participants into two groups. One does the control then the condition where the other group will do the condition, experimental condition and then the control group. All right, so counterbalancing will help counter the order effects of repeated measures. Now, the third way of dealing with things is what's called the match participants. Now, this, is, this has elements of both the uh, independent groups as well as the um, repeated measures. What you do to begin with if you, is you pair every participant to someone very similar to them in the area that you're most interested in. So if we're interested in, again, uh, checking how uh, energy drinks affect someone's performance, um, running performance, we would make sure that uh, each participant is paired up roughly on their fitness level. And so that uh, you, you have A1 and A2 paired up with similar levels. They might be both really good athletes. B1 and B2 might both be not so good athletes. And again, C1 and C2, again, similar capabilities. D1 and D2, similar capabilities. Then we allocate them, randomly allocate you know, each pair, each pair partner, into either the control group or the condition group, experimental control group. Now, this obviously has the advantage that uh, they're matched on the relevant con uh, characteristics. All right. And this also means that we can run experiments where it doesn't matter if if they've seen it. Um, well, it run, we can run experiments where if they get exposed to the condition, um, you know, it's not going to affect how they 
um, you know sort of respond uh, like say for example the Ratman experiment where if they had already seen the ambiguous figure um, it would affect them you know for whichever condition they were to do next now the only problem uh, well there's a number of problems but the biggest problem with this match participants is it's difficult or time-consuming to take into account all possible relevant characteristics and match them now if we had identical twins that's pretty ideal for match participants design now when they're in you know when you're conducting experiments of course you have participant effects this is where the expectations of the participants of the treatment they are they're about to undergo could affect the results you know uh, we call this the placebo effects where the expectations of participants does actually produce the expected results even though they get an inactive or fake treatment All right so you know we might find that there's a placebo effect for the energy drink where the energy drink doesn't actually do anything for them people expect by drinking energy drinks that they should perform better and then they perform better now it could go the other way as well we could in addition to having the participants uh, thinking that uh, something is going to be helpful we have the experimenter also thinking something is likely to be helpful and then affect the results of the study you know through their responses this can happen through what's called the self-fulfilling prophecy all right um, whereby the experimenters um, behavior um, you know unintentionally often produces the desired effect or there's an experimenter bias where how the experimenter collects the data or how he treats the data is more likely to uh, you know bias them towards uh, the expected result that they wanted now in order to counteract this uh, we can set up a single blind experiment all right um, and this is where the participant doesn't know whether they're in the experimental group or the control group that way they don't know what to expect and so therefore they won't affect it or the experimenters don't know what group the participants in now obviously we would need to involve an additional experimenter to run the experiment who doesn't know which condition the participants are involved with or don't know what expected results are going to happen so a single blind is where either the participant doesn't know or the experimenter doesn't know this counteracts both the placebo or the experimenter effects uh, remember single blind only addresses one of those a double blind experiment involves both the participants and the experimenters not knowing which participant which treatment group the participants are in this counters both placebo and experimenter effects this obviously requires a lot more of setup and so that's why it's harder to, to or not as common to put in place now whenever we think about research we need to think about ethics you know the right thing there are four main areas of ethics uh, integrity and professional conduct uh, there's beneficence there's justice and there's respect for person integrity is about making sure the researcher has a suitable level of experience and skill or act in ways that don't bring the profession into dispute beneficence is about doing good and not harm in order to maximize possible benefits with minimal harm or discomfort to participants justice is about making sure all participants should have access to the benefits of the research that no discrimination in the selection and recruitment of the participants are involved and respect for persons involves looking after participants well-being rights belief values and personhoods now there are seven main areas or subheadings of respect for persons and you can remember those by the um, you know um, mnemonic of very intelligent dudes can do well which is voluntary participation informed consent deception confidentiality debriefing and withdrawal rights I've got a slide about that lots of information but uh, 
not enough time to cover that in this podcast. Thanks for listening.